Hello everyone. Thank you for joining my talk about a joint work on graphene quantum Hall effect devices for AC and DC resistance metrology. In the work that I show today, the PTB focused on the characterization and measurement of a set of samples that were developed and fabricated at the NIST in Gaithersburg. At the PTB, the work is done within the project GIX, where we are developing a graphene-based impedance quantum standard. A few words to my person. My name is Matthias Großkopf. I came to the PTB in 2013, where I started working in the group of low-dimensional electron systems as a PhD student. A few years later, as a postdoc, I worked at the NIST in the group of Randolph Elmquist, where I continued to work on graphene-based quantum Hall resistance standards. And then I got the opportunity to go back to the PTV, where I'm now permanently employed in the group of current and quantum resistance of Hans-Jörg Scherer. The two main parts of my talk will be about DC precision measurements and measurements at alternating currents. Here we will learn about the frequency dependence of the longitudinal resistance, the Hall resistance and capacitive losses in the tested devices. Let's start with the introduction. The main motivation of graphing QHR devices is the realization of the unit ohm with less effort compared to gallium arsenide based resistance standards. The goal is to use the advantages of the very broad resistance plateau and the higher measurement temperature to develop compact and easy to use QHR systems based on closed cycle cryostats that are not only operating at direct current but also at alternating current such as the one shown in this photo. Still challenging is the control of the charge carrier density of the graphene devices and the bridge design for measurements at alternating current. However, as you will learn in my talk and in those of my colleagues, we are making good progress in these points. The quantum hall devices apply a reworked contact design on which I was working on at NIST. It uses source strain and hall contacts that are split into individual branches to integrate the principle of the so-called Delahaye multiple series connection. Additionally, the contacts apply a layer of superconducting niobium titanium nitride to minimize dissipation. At NIST, Albert Rigosi and I were working on a doping technique where the graphene is functionalized with chromium tricarbonyl, which then allows for tuning the carrier density to the desired value afterward. The initial low p-type or n-type doping level is shifted deeper into the n-type region by heating the sample. At PTB we attach the heating element to our cryostat to realize the procedure. Since the tuning procedure works very reliable and the process is reversible, it provides a high degree of flexibility. On the lower left side, you see the mounted graphene device from NIST that is in all cases adjusted to a n-type carrier density in the lower range of 10 to 11 per square centimeters using the described doping technique. For DC precision characterization, we used our CCC resistance bridge from Magnicon to compare the QHR device to a 100 ohm standard resistor. This brings me to the results of the DC precision measurements. We characterized the device with the name NIST number 2 under different doping conditions. The first condition describes a relatively low carrier density of 1 times 10 to 11 per square centimeter with resistance quantization starting below 2 tesla in the overview measurement as you can see in the left plot. The CCC plot on the right shows that the longitudinal resistance in red drops to about 500 to 300 microohm between 7 and 12 tesla, which is still relatively high since we are used to getting rho xx values of around 10 microohm under optimal conditions. After retuning the device for the next cooldown, the situation improved, as you can see in the two plots below. 
row xx approaches now values close to zero and also the deviation from the measured Hall resistance from the expected value, which is the half of the Klitzing constant, is now within one PPB starting at seven Tesla. The third condition represented by these plots was at an even higher carrier density, resulting in rho xx values around 10 microohm starting at 9 tesla. At these flux densities, the device fulfills the requirements of the guidelines of DC quantum resistance metrology and also for the AC measurements that are following in the next slides, these conditions are used. This brings me to the first part of the measurements at alternating currents, where we were looking at the longitudinal resistance. The setup is well described in the Metrologia paper of Jürgen Schur. It uses a lock-in as the source and detector, a stable capacitor for capacitive injection to compensate for capacitive components, and a part to compensate for a mismatch in the phase. The system is used to measure the longitudinal resistance on the low potential side of the Hall bar. The measurement results in the left plot show the longitudinal resistance rho xx between 5 and 12 tesla. One can see from the continuous measurement that there is a difference between measuring at high frequency near 4.9 kHz given in blue compared to the lower frequency data at 1.2 kHz in red. The fixed field data points show the frequency dependence even more clearly. The CCC data points representing the measurements at 0 Hz are given by the black stars. In the right diagram, I plotted the frequency dependence for the different B-fields, which show that there is a linear dependence that follow the tendency of the CCC measurement. However, at higher fields, where the sample was well quantized, the DC results were slightly smaller compared to the extrapolated AC results by about 50 to 100 microohm. At lower fields, where the quantization was not very good, the opposite was observed since the true DC measurement showed about 300 microohm higher values than the extrapolated value from the AC measurement. In the following slides, I like to show RXY measurements with Jürgen Schur's transformer based coaxial impedance bridge. These measurements were obtained with another graphene device with the name NIST 1 which uses the same layout as the previous one, but has a significantly lower carrier density. This resulted in the beginning of the resistance plateau around one Tesla. For this sample, the longitudinal resistance was relatively high with a minimum at around seven Tesla with a DC and AC value of about 500 microohm, which is expected for such low charge carrier densities. Below, I plotted the delta RXY data obtained with Jürgen Schur's impedance bridge, which describes the offset of the measured value from the expected value, which again is the half of the Klitzing constant. The blue, red, and yellow graphs show the result at 1, 3, and 5 kilohertz and indicate that the offset is decreasing with lower frequencies. When fitting the data of different frequencies with a linear function, we find that we almost exactly hit a delta RXY of zero. To be precise, we found a delta RXY of 0 0.36 ppb at zero hertz from the extrapolated AC measurement. And the true DC value obtained with the CCC is minus 3.37 ppb. Both values do not exactly match within the type A uncertainty, but certainly do overlap when including the uncertainties attached to the room temperature standard resistors of the AC and DC bridges. A very interesting point is the fact that the slope of the measured frequency dependence is positive. While this is typically observed for gallium arsenide devices, 
It was very rarely observed in the case of graphene samples. We would like to find out if this is due to the superconducting material that was used in the contacts or if this is due to the unusual design with only two hall contacts instead of three in the NIST design. Both can have an impact on the capacitive components and losses. At the PTB, we are interested in measuring the capacitive components of our devices to be able to engineer the device properties such that we can minimize the resulting frequency dependence of RXY. In the upper plots on the right side, you see the measured capacitance between the low potential side and the surroundings CP1. The lower plot shows the measured combined capacitance CP2 that is located between the high and low potential side of the hall bar that is mixing with the capacitance of the high side with respect to the surrounding. We had some issues with the temperature stability in this measurements, but what we basically see here is that there is no clear frequency dependence, but definitely changes in the capacitive components when sweeping the B field which is in agreement to previous works. The collected results act as a reference for the next samples to come, but this also means that we need to measure more samples before we can really answer our questions regarding their influence on the frequency dependence of RXY. For example, it would be nice to have a sample with the same design, but that uses normal metals only such as gold instead of superconducting materials to have a direct comparison. In summary, we had a successful measurement campaign with the devices from NIST. All devices worked well at AC and DC with low longitudinal resistances and PPB quantization. We are now interested in finding out the reason for the positive frequency dependence. Our future work thus will include the investigation of shields, gates, different contacts, materials and sample designs in general to find reliable ways to control the frequency dependence and related capacitive losses in the devices. With that, I would like to thank everyone for listening to my talk. Here on the left side, you see the main persons that are involved at NIST on the Gaithersburg campus and on the right, the team from PTB on the campus in Brunswick. We are very happy about the collaboration and are looking forward to continuing the work in this format. Thank you for the great teamwork. And last but not least, I also like to thank for the funding that some of our team members at PTB receive from the European Metrology Program of Innovation and Research within the project GIGS, the Graphene Impedance Quantum Standard. All the best for everyone and see you next time.